During combustion within the combustion chamber, a lot of energy is released in the form of kinetic and thermal energy. Thermal energy is transferred from the exhaust gas to the chamber walls, and the walls of the rocket nozzle can reach extremely high temperatures of up to 4400 Kelvin, a little over 2.5 times the melting point of steel. Even tungsten, with a melting point of nearly 4000 Kelvin, cannot withstand these temperatures. If the chamber wall temperatures reach above the material's melting point, the chamber walls may weaken, melt, deform, and ultimately fail. Cooling methods are employed to keep chamber walls well below their melting points. The most common type of cooling method in liquid propellant rockets is regenerative cooling. With this method, the nozzle wall is enclosed within a cooling jacket, which has channels to allow for the circulation of propellant across the chamber walls. When propellant circulates within the jacket, it absorbs thermal energy from the nozzle walls, therefore reducing the temperature of the walls. As a result, the, the propellant temperature rises. Most often, the fuel, rather than the oxidizer, is injected into the cooling jacket. Fuels tend to have a higher specific heat than oxidizers, which means they can absorb more thermal energy before the temperature increases. Oxidizers tend to evaporate more easily when heated because of their extremely low specific heat so they are usually not used to cool the chamber walls. After the propellant reaches the end of the cooling jacket, it is recirculated back into the combustion chamber to generate combustion. Since the propellant absorbs thermal energy from the walls when it circulates through the cooling jacket, it is more energized by the time it reaches the combustion chamber, and this excess energy results in a more energetic combustion, meaning kinetic energy increases. Since the heat transfer rates are highest at the throat, the throat walls require the most cooling. To increase the rate of cooling at the throat, the channels are constricted so that the velocity of the propellant is high, allowing for more propellant to flow through, the, to flow through during a given time. Another type of cooling method is radiation cooling. A high temperature material is used for the nozzle in order for it to absorb a lot of heat and then radiate it away. One example of material is niobium metal. When it is heated to high temperatures, this metal glows white hot. It releases its thermal energy in the form of light. Heat sink cooling utilizes an inner liner within the combustion chamber to protect the walls from excess heat transfer. The liner is made up of ablative material, which is meant to break down as it absorbs heat. These materials often char or melt, and often form a thick layer to prevent further heat transfer to the walls. Examples of ablative materials are glass, Kevlar, and carbon fibers. Although nozzles are cooled, the wall temperatures are still very high, so thermal expansion still occurs. As wall temperatures increase, the cross-sectional area of the nozzle sections increase. As a result, the engine loses efficiency, specifically specific impulse. To prevent expansion, the nozzle is fitted with reinforcing bands. These bands are thickest at the chamber and the throat due to the high thermal expansion rates. Temperature at the nozzle exit is relatively low because temperature decreases as the exhaust expands. Therefore, relatively thin reinforcing bands are used at the nozzle exit.